Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel, The Crumbs in the Philippines. We really appreciate you stopping by today. There's so much content out on YouTube that covers the topic of living in the Philippines. and We really appreciate you taking the time to share a bit of our lives with us here in Batangas, a beautiful province on the island of Luzon. Just for a quick update, I'd like to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for all of the birthday wishes. I celebrated my 62nd birthday on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. We were planning on going to the island of Mindoro, but this is uh, the typical typhoon season in the Philippines, and it has been a little bit active this year. So we had to postpone our trip. We only set it back by a week, though. So we're going to be headed out this coming Sunday to try it again and make that trip over to Puerto Galero, where we're going to share that experience with you, what it's like taking a motorcycle with you on the ferry and all the costs involved and the type of accommodations you can get at a really class one beach. The white beach in Puerto Galero is really one of the nicer beaches in the Philippines. It's not, I wouldn't put it on the same level as Alona Beach or Baracay or the El Nido and Coron, but for, I would say, the island of Mindoro and Luzon, and it's a very, very nice beach with white sand, and, and we'll share that with you. As always, guys, if you appreciate this type of content, please take a moment and press the like button and the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. It helps push our content out to more and more people and get us a little bit more exposure. We're a small YouTube channel, and the only way that new viewers are able to view our content and see if they like it is if the YouTube algorithm pushes it out to them or it's shared by people that have already seen it. The only way to, to advance yourself in that algorithm is to get a lot of likes and views on your videos. So the more likes we can get, the better it is for us. And we appreciate every one of you guys. Today we're going to talk about, am I leaving the Philippines? And this topic, uh, I, I've been watching a few YouTube videos on uh, of my own, which I, I spend a little bit of time every day watching YouTube videos, just to see what kind of content is out there. And, and, and if there's any new information that I might learn from. And because I learn new stuff all of the time, there's guys that know a lot more about living here than I do and that have been here a lot longer than I have. And, and I am not so egotistical as to think that I know everything and I don't have anything to learn from any of these other vloggers. Because many of them give some really good advice out there and I've used it myself on many occasions. But anyway, as I was watching the videos on YouTube, I noticed that there were uh, more than a few expats, and I'm not going to name any names or locations or anything, but that had come to the Philippines and, and given it a try, and, and they end up leaving after one or two months or some even after a few weeks, and, and it made me think, you know, like, why is it that someone would come halfway around the world and, and attempt to make a new life for yourselves only to just pack it up and go home after such a short period of time. And I mean, I could chalk it up to a, a couple of things. Uh, number one and first and foremost would be a failed relationship. And some of these uh, expats come over here having only talked to their significant other which could be a girlfriend or future wife through a dating site and they come over here and they meet them and after they get to know each other for a little bit they decide that uh, they're just not compatible with each other and the uh, expat leaves bitter and, and decides to just go back home because it, it kind of sours the whole experience. Another thing I've noticed is that if you have a tendency as a person back in your home country, for me that would be the USA, to be the type of person that gives up easily, like 
whenever you deal with a little bit of adversity, you pack it up and go home, or you quit what you're doing, or you shift gears in midstream. That kind of uh, pattern of behavior is not going to change just because you move to the Philippines. If that's the type of person you are, you're still going to be that type of person when you get here. And the second that it gets a little uncomfortable for you, you're already looking for a way to get out. You find excuses. You blame it on the culture, the rules, the laws, the people, and everything else, the food. Whenever really deep down, it's, it's your own self and just the way that your personality operates and it's the way you've lived your entire life, you're just repeating the same process over again in a foreign country. Now as for me, I am perfectly suited to living in the Philippines and I have no plans of leaving on a permanent basis anytime soon. Now I do have some trips planned for going back to the USA to visit family and friends next year being the first time that, that I plan on going back, but that's only temporary, like a month at the most, and, and then I'll come back here. Philippines is my home now, and I, I fit this place to a T. It, is, uh, it just feels very comfortable to me living here. I didn't have to make very many provisions or sacrifices. Everything just kind of gelled together in a, an easy way. It was very easy for me to ease into this lifestyle, I guess you would say. I didn't have any issue whatsoever with the food or with the culture and with the slow pace of life. In fact, those are some of the things that I really appreciate about the Philippines. And I also know that even though I miss my mother very much and, and my kids and grandkids back in the States, I do the best I can to keep in touch with them through Facebook and Instant Messenger and, and we FaceTime as, as often as we can. But the truth is, had I remained in the United States, my only options would have been to continue working at a breakneck pace until I turned 70 or if I even lived that long due to the stress-related nature of the work. Or I could have retired as I did already, stayed in the USA and struggled seriously financially and potentially have become a burden to my children, which I, that's something that I'm not going to do. I refuse to do that. So looking abroad for retirement was a very, very valid thing for me to research and end up doing. And when I made that decision, it, it it just lifted that burden off of me, and I, I felt lighter. I was happy, and I've never looked back. I mean, I've never been happier than I am right now here in the Philippines. I, I loved coaching softball. I loved teaching. I loved the time I spent traveling in military service and all of those things. I, I, don't, I loved it when I lived in Germany. I, we lived there for 13 years. It's a wonderful experience, but I've never been as happy as I am right now. I sleep well at night, and I mean, I'm not to get too personal, but I don't, whenever I sleep, I sleep through the night. I don't have to wake up and go to the bathroom, which I, I had to do that whenever I was living in the States, and I can only attribute that to stress. Now I sleep entirely through the night. I don't have to wake up. I wake up refreshed after sleeping seven to eight consecutive hours, something that I hadn't done for decades before coming here. And it's just the slow pace of life and the absence of stress. It's, it's amazing what it will do for you. I just haven't felt this well in, in a very, very long time. So in the long term, I, what my plan and Jen together, our plan is, is we're going to go to the USA and for, so that Jen can meet my mom and the rest of my family. And we'll stay there for about a month next year around August. 
because I want to be there during softball season so I can take Jen to a softball game back where I coached in Missouri. We'll, we'll stop in and see my old school, how they're doing in softball. And then we'll come back to the Philippines. And by that time, we'll be just a little over a year and a half from paying off the house that we're living in here. And once the house is paid off and we eliminate that $30,000 per month, or excuse me, pesos per month payment, then we're going to turn around and make a trip to the USA for a year. We're going to either rent or buy a used RV and just travel the USA so I can show Jen all the sites and things that I remember from growing up. Because I've been all across the USA and visited many, many places that I'd like to see one more time as well and would definitely like to share with her. And then after that year is up, we'll dump the RV and come back to the Philippines and we'll already have our house paid for. We'll have either her son and his wife or maybe her sister and her husband live in the house while we're gone for that year. And they'll take care of it and, and do all the upkeep and maintenance and all that good stuff. And in the long term, I'd also like to buy a small piece of land somewhere else in the Philippines, another area of the Philippines that's close to the coast, and then build a little, either a Nipa hut or a vacation home, something where you could actually have air conditioning, but that it's just not too fancy. It'd only be for like vacationing, where we could split time between uh, our vacation home and then our home here in Lipa. Because we really like it here in Lipa. We love the people. We have a lot of friends, and we love our church here. And uh, that's not something that we'd want to give up. So, then, But then half of the year we could spend at the coast somewhere. And you can pick up lots pretty cheap if you keep your eye open. And of course, we have to put it in Jen's name, and it would be hers. And I will, In another video, I'll explain to you why I don't really have a problem with uh, putting the uh, properties in Jen's name, just like the house here. Number one, it's the law. I mean, I can't own the property that that we're living in here, but I really don't have an issue with that. And I'll explain that to you in detail in a later video. And we'll also have another cost of living video coming out really soon where I've seen so many videos here recently that it just... I don't, I don't know how people can say that it's not possible to live in the Philippines comfortably for under $1,000 a month, but they, they must be seeing something that I'm not seeing because I, I know that if I just lived in a, a place that was even half or less than I pay in rent each month for our house, which is 30000 if I drop that down to like ten to 12000 pesos per month, Jen and I, and I would be living very, very comfortably for about six to seven hundred dollars a month. And it's very possible. Now we don't drink alcohol, we don't smoke, so I mean those are other things that you have to kind of factor in, and the vices can add up very quickly if uh, if you're not careful. And they're not they're cheaper in the Philippines, but depending on how much you drink, how much you smoke how much you want to go out to the nightclubs. Those types of things are all voluntary, things that we all make choices to do. But just the basic living, going out to eat, going on trips, and going to the beach, and going swimming to the waterfalls, you can do all that stuff very cheaply and within a very reasonable budget. And you can definitely do that for under $1,000 per month. And I'm going to explain that in detail in the next video. But anyways, guys, we appreciate you so much dropping by. We love all of you. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy. Stay happy. And we'll see you next time.